From the trenches of World War I to the vast deserts of North Africa and the modern battlegrounds of today, tanks have played a pivotal role in shaping the course of warfare. These steel behemoths combine firepower, mobility, and protective armour, making them the backbone of armoured warfare. However, with over a hundred years of designs, some tanks have reformed to a less than ideal standard. From the tank with an odd main gun, to the underpowered and over-armoured target, and the over-engineered multi-turreted vehicle, these are the worst tanks of all time. Talk 2 After the end of World War I, a massive influx of tanks and armoured vehicles were produced and manufactured by armies across the world. Tanks had proved their worth on the battleground in the previous war, and many nations were keen on getting the best and most innovative machines. Unfortunately, most of these tanks were produced with the outdated mindset that the next war was going to involve trenches, just like World War I. This was the circumstances under which the TOG-2 was designed and produced. The TOG-2 was a super heavy tank designed in 1940 by the United Kingdom. Weighing in at over 80 metric tons, and with a length of over 10 meters, this tank was a massive but clunky design. Its armour was 114mm on the front of the turret and hull, with 76mm armour being used on the sides of the hull, and 50mm armour on the back. The TOG-2 carried a hefty QF 17 pounder main gun, with a 7.92 Bisa machine gun being used as a support weapon. Only one prototype was produced in 1941, by William Foster and Co. The prototype proved to be promising, but the tank never entered service. By the time World War II was in full swing, it became clear that it would be nothing like the First World War. Long gone were the days of hundreds of kilometres of trenches, with big attacks resulting in small progress. The TOG-2 was too bulky, too slow, and too heavy for use in this new lightning war. The project was terminated after the prototype was made, and the TOG-2 was donated to the Tank Museum, where it can be seen today. M3 Lee slash Grant by the time that World War II had started in Europe, the United States only had about 400 tanks. Most of these tanks were M2 light tanks, with a few outdated M2 medium tanks being the only modern vehicles in their army. This greatly worried the US, as they had underfunded tank production and designs post World War I. As the conflict in Europe became bigger and more deadly, and with the expanding Japanese Empire in the Pacific, the US started looking for more modern designs for its military. The result of this was the M3. Designed in 1941, the M3 was notable due to its odd gun placement, with this main gun being located on an offset sponson, and a smaller gun being located on a turret on top of the tank. Its main armament was a 75mm gun, with the smaller gun being only 37mm. The M3 had a speed of 42km an hour on road, and 26km an hour off road. Weighing in at 27 tons, and with a length of 5 meters, the M3 was designed to be a medium tank, its armour measured in at 51mm on the hull front, turret front, sides and rear, with 38mm armour being used on the hull sides and rear. The M3 had formidable armour and impressive firepower, however, its many drawbacks resulted in it being quickly replaced when other tanks were available. The M3's unique sponsor gun design made aiming difficult, especially at longer distances. Standing at over 3 meters tall, its high silhouette made it easy to spot, especially when moving. Group this with poor off-road performance, and a river to construction, and it's clear why the M3 was switched out when M4 Shermans became more available. M3s were used by the UK, Australia, and Canada during and after the war, with their last M3 being retired in the 1950s. Char B1 With the end of World War I, France found itself in an odd position. The nation had been devastated by Germany in the years prior, and needed to modernise its military. As early as 1921, France began designing more modern tanks for its army. One of these tanks was the Char B1. The Char B1 was a culmination of various prototypes and designs made by France post World War I. It was intended to be a breakthrough tank, a type of heavy tank designed to spearhead attacks. The tank finally finished its design phase in 1934, and 405 tanks were produced between 1935 and 1940. The tank had a mass of 28 tons and a length of over 6 meters, making it a rather large vehicle. Its armour ranged from 40mm on some variants, to 60mm on others. Its main armament included a 75mm ABS-SA-35 howitzer, 
with its secondary armament being a 47mm anti-tank gun. The Char B1 was one of the most heavily armoured and most powerful tanks of its time, and proved effective against German armour during the Battle of France in 1940. However, even with all of its strides in technology, various factors caused it to lack the necessary features to be effective. Most notably, the tank was slow and had high fuel consumption. This resulted in it being ineffectively used in the fast-paced tactics that Germany employed during the invasion of France. After France was captured, a few Char B1s were converted into flamethrower tanks by the Germans. Char B1s were also converted into supply vehicles, training tanks, self-propelled artillery guns, and even used as tank turret fortifications on Normandy and the Atlantic Wall. After the Second World War, the tank was fully retired, and 11 Char B1s currently exist on display in museums. Vickers A1E1 Independent From its conception in 1922, the Vickers A1E1 Independent was a revolutionary idea. Designed by the legendary weapons company Vickers, this British-made tank was finally completed in 1926. The tank featured a welded steel construction, with armour varying from 13mm to 28mm thick. The A1E1 was primarily armed with a 3-pounder gun, with four 7.62mm machine guns mounted to their own turrets. This characteristic was what set the Independent apart from other designs of the time. The multi-turreted design provided more manoeuvrability, accuracy, and firepower in the heat of battle. Weighing in at 34 tons, and a length of over 7.5 meters, the tank was quite hefty. Only one prototype was produced, and the tank was never used in combat. However, the story doesn't end here. The unique design and time period that the A1E1 was designed made it a big influence on many other tanks. Tanks that were influenced by the design included the Soviet T100, T28, and T35 tanks, the German Neubaufahrzeug tank, and British medium MK3 and cruiser MK1 tanks. The Independent was used in tests until 1935 and can now be seen in the Tank Museum. Bob Semple At the start of World War II, New Zealand found itself unprepared, with no tanks being built or designed locally. It was expected that they would receive no new tanks from the UK or other allies, as they were heavily fighting in Europe. However, New Zealand had heavy industrial machinery that could be used in the production of tanks if needed. Unfortunately, they were unprepared to undertake this task, but no tanks could be made for the time being. A few improvised armoured trucks were made, but with the fall of France in 1940, and the abandonment of most British armour, it was clear that there would be no equipment support for the time being. In the absence of both experience and parts, it was decided that a tractor tank design would be enough for the time being. The idea was that the tank's superstructure could be quickly attached to the tractor base, making for a quick deployment of tanks in the event of invasion. A prototype was built using a Caterpillar D8 tractor, a readily available tractor for civilian use. A lack of heavy weapons caused it to be armed with six brand machine guns, with two being on the front, one on each side, one in the turret, and one on the rear. The tank had a height of 3.5 meters and performed very poorly during tests. Due largely to the lack of any armour plates at the time, corrugated steel was used instead. The Bob Semple was designed without any formal blueprints or plans, making for some interesting flaws in its layout. The layout and calibre of the guns made it ineffective against other tanks, meaning that it could only be used against infantry. Its almost non-existent armour made it easy to disable quickly, with even rifle bullets being able to penetrate the armour. The tank weighed about 25 tonnes, and stood at over 4 metres tall, making it too heavy and unstable to be used effectively. With a max speed of only 24 kilometres an hour, the tank was woefully slow, and only had an operational distance of about 160 kilometres. In total, three tanks were made, much to the amusement of the public, who saw through the patriotism. The Bob Semple was never used in combat, and was quickly discarded by the New Zealand Army.